Oh, okay. Hey, y'all got finally got here. Hey, Johnny. Hey, Jupiter. Hey, one chosen. Today, I want to talk about cause and effect. Cause and effect. You know, they have a law in the physical reality that a lot of people don't pay attention to. There are many laws. One is, you know, you probably heard of like the law of attraction. You probably heard of the law of uh, assumption, maybe. You probably, hey, Dwayne Johnson. Thank you, thank you. Just rolling through live videos. Okay, thank you for passing through, babe. Anyway, you probably heard of these different laws. We don't see these laws. You probably never was taught these laws when we were younger, but these particular laws exist. So there's a law of cause and effect that we're governed under, right? Just like we have the law of gravity, for example. So right now in your physical reality, whatever you see outside of you, that's your effect. That's your effect. <laughs> because life is happening through you, right? So in your spiritual journey, it's a pivotal moment when we realize, well, wait a minute, what, what was the cause of this here effect? <laughs> What was the cause of this effect? The stuff that I see, how did it get here? How did the stuff that I see in my physical reality get here? Through thought. We think these things up because we're running the physical reality. Remember when we was in, in religion and they, they used to say, um, well, if it's God's will, if it's God's will, well, here when you come forward, you have a choice. So it's you deciding thought by thought by thought what you gonna choose. Now really and truly you already made the choice. We're just here in physical form trying to remember or join back to our superconscious, remember why we made that choice. <laughs> but we really already made the choices. So we become sometimes in our physical reality our own stumbling block when we sit there and we wait and we, we, we feel so hopeless. We feel like just a soldier in the army of the Lord. We feel like things are happening to us when really life is happening through us. And so my physical reality, you know, I shared with you all that, you know, that I was manifesting this particular house that I'm in right now, right? So basically, y'all know what was on my mind for the last 90 days. Because y'all could see my effect. Now, what caused this here to get here, to come forth in physical reality? Me and the way that I was thinking. Now, today, I have new thoughts going on for me to manifest more things. So the next time you see me, you're going to see some other effects that I caused. Right? And the same thing is happening to you in your physical reality. The same thing is happening, thought by thought by thought by thought. And you know why I really, really want to do this particular live? Is because I want you to pay attention to the lives that you frequent. You know, when we on TikTok, those lives that we go to, you know, especially dealing with like relationship and money or things that you really, really want to kind of like have a easy flow with. Like when you, for example, on a live with, with other people and they talking and they telling you their shitty experiences with money, their shitty experiences with, with, um, with their health maybe, or their shitty experiences with relationship, even though you might just be listening, your subconscious mind is still open to that. And that could very well lead to you having a different effect in your physical reality because that lie that you was listening to all that time could have been the cause of you to, to begin to think shitty about money, about relationships, this, is, this goes even to, to the certain TV shows that you watch. You begin to listen to people and those thoughts, their thoughts begin to become your thoughts. <sighs> and then you're wondering in the quiet moments of life while, well, why things are happening to you, you don't understand why you're sitting there thinking the most negative thing in the world. Because those thoughts are energy too and they could trans, be transferred to you <laughs> through other people. Hey, speak those things that be not as though they were. Definitely, definitely, many. 
Oh, that's minister. Minister, I was breaking it up. Minister, wait, minister who? Minister T.C. Pappy. Okay, okay. So, and I come from actually a religious background and, and we learn this in church, in religion, you know, in that biblical text. It, it, it teaches you to let this new mind be in you, but in, in our physical reality, some of us, we really ignore that, that, that upbringing when, when it's time to put it into play. We ignore it and we begin to sit in, in the rut because thoughts are so, are so um, <laughs> they have the ability to reproduce themselves. They're like so fertile, so to speak, like, right? And so one thought leads to another thought. And so right now in this moment in my life, I'm able to be still with myself. And, and this, is, this is a moment in my life that I've never really been this quiet, you know, things being so quiet, being that I just recently did early retirement. And so now I have extra time. Matter of fact, you know what's on my to-do list today? On my to-do list today is to go and I have this little feeder already for um, hummingbirds to feed them. But I, on my to-do list is just to go shopping for a little stick so I could prop the hummingbird feeder close to my window so I could see the hummingbirds when they come to get something, right? It's a beautiful thing. But keep in mind, I don't have to work. So now, you know, now my mind is open to pay attention to my thoughts. I never opened up my, you know, my passion, my business. I'm gonna wait till, till next month to do that. On August 1st, I'll do that. But for right now, I just wanted to be still for a moment in between retirement and doing my passion and just quiet myself and pay attention to my thoughts. And as I pay attention to my thoughts, I sit, I'm sifting through my thoughts like, oh, I didn't know that thing was up in there. Oh, where did I get that one from? I wanna purge that one. I wanna renew that thought because that thought right there is very well tied to my effects. That thought is causing my effects in my physical reality. And I don't want my physical reality to be like that. So I gotta monitor my thoughts. I have to be a deliberate creator instead of creating by default. And then saying, oh, why does that happen to me? And, and where is God? And oh, that person must be lucky and I'm not. No, this is a moment in my life where I intentionally want to pay attention to my cause and I'm my cause and I encourage you to realize that you're your cause in the physical reality when you get to this place it's a pivotal moment where you can change everything about life as you see it about life as you know it because now you're being accountable for your energy so think about it like this here even on commercials even on commercials, you know, when, they, when they're telling you about um, medication or whatever, take this medication and this such and such side effect will happen to you. In your mind, you're having a thought. You're probably having a thought, well, I wonder if, if the commercial is about thyroid issues or something. I wonder if I have thyroid issues. I wonder, you know, because when I was eating the other day, it was kind of rough when I swallowed. You having a thought. That's why it's so important to pay attention to the stuff, the energy, the thoughts, or the frequent things that you accustom yourself to, like these lives, like the music that you're pay paying attention to, like your thoughts that you're having when nothing else is happening. Like I was cooking and I was chopping up some herbs for my, my dinner and, and you know, so it was quiet in here and so I had my own thoughts. I was alone with my thoughts. And being alone with my thoughts, I said, you know what? I, I, I want to do a live. But if I was a negative person and I didn't do lives, I could have very well be in here alone thinking about the last time something bad happened to me. Yeah. And so being that I'll be, if I was that negative person and think about the bad that happened to me in my past, that means I was creating intentionally more of that bad because that was would be the thing that I was giving my energy to. And so... That would actually also be for that negative person, their effect, their effect, their life, their shitty life while they're sitting there thinking about more shitty things is really their effect. <laughs> but they want to ignore it. I was on a live yesterday and this is why I tell you about what, um, lives. You know, a lot of people that I follow and I don't follow that many people. I try to follow people that's going to feed me and be on the same frequency I am on. But I have some people that I follow and a lot of them like to talk about relationships. Yesterday I was just passing through and, um, and they were talking about relationships. 
And there was this guy that was talking on this particular live about this woman who was, I guess, taking his money. I only stayed for maybe two minutes, but that's what I got out of it, that she, she was taking his money. Now, everybody in the comment section was saying, hey, bro, she using you, bro. But he kept going on and on and on. He's like, yeah, but I mean, I'm trying da 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 and I'm, I'm da 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 But he didn't want to be accountable for his energy. Like, everybody telling them, though, they had about they had about 70 people in there telling them, bruh, bruh, you did what? Bruh, when you gonna stop, bruh? Bruh, basically what they were saying was, bruh. <laughs> That's the effect, because you're the cause. <laughs> That's what they were saying to this particular person, but he wasn't hearing them. Same energy turns windmills, yeah. I so needed to hear your words today. Oh, thank you, babe. Yeah, you thought me up already. <laughs> I, I am your effect of you thinking what you needed to hear, right? So anyway, so pay attention to, to what you give your energy to. Because I could tell you all, okay, how many people? This is about 35 people up in here. Okay, so real quick, let me, let me, let me share with you how, how, how mine is so freaking powerful. I'm going to say this to you. Listen clearly to this, and I'm going to ask you to follow this little task real quick. Whatever you do, do not think about a pink piggy bank. Do not. Do not think about a pink piggy bank. Now, what did you do? What did you think about? Tell me what you thought about. I won't hear. Whatever you do, I ask, do not think about a pink piggy bank. Don't think about it. Don't you do it. I'm waiting for these comments because I know that they have a delay on this thing. I'm waiting for these comments. I want to hear what you thought about. <laughs> a purple shoe. Okay. A purple shoe. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, Faith. That's beautiful. You, you have a beautiful mind. I started naming other things. Okay. Nothing. It went away, okay? Did anybody honestly think about a pink piggy bank? When I said do not, did anybody think about a pink piggy bank? Nobody thought about a pink piggy bank, not one person. Our mind is so powerful. Our mind is so powerful and most often than not, our mind don't even understand when we say do not do something. Ah, that's what I'm talking about, brown sugar. That's beautiful. That is so beautiful. Because let me tell you, if your mind, if you haven't been practicing this here kind of thing with your mind already, like I see these people that's coming and have practice, then your mind wouldn't even pay attention to the word do not. It'll still do it anyway. <laughs> that's how powerful it is. That's how much it wants to create. So when you're on these particular lives with people and they tell you about their shitty experiences, sometimes your mind just won't jump on and create some more of that like, yeah, like, yeah, we're never going to make it because the government has it all figured out. Yeah, I'm with you on that if that's the particular live that you're on. Or yeah, I know these men been manipulating women and these women out here to get us men or whatever that live is that you're on at that particular time. Your mind will begin to find reason to believe that because your mind is out there just ready to create. You have a choice. You could think about whatever it is that you want to think. You could have thought about that pink piggy bank if you wanted to, or you could have programmed your mind like these people that just come in and said, nope, I'm thinking about everything else but that. That's when you, these people that come in, that's when you are a deliberate creator. The ones that didn't want to share that they really thought about the pink piggy bank, even though I told them not to, it's okay if you don't want to share what your mind is. But just like that simple example, your reality is like that too. Your reality jumps into whatever choice you put inside of your head. Every day your reality does that. It's not because some people are lucky. It's not. I used to want to believe that myself. It's not because some people was born into generational wealth. No, nope, it's not. It's not. It's those people's thoughts. See, the thing is, we, can't, we could look at people, we don't know actually what they're thinking at that particular moment. We could just guess, we could assume. But it doesn't really matter what they're thinking. What really matters is what you're thinking. 
What really matters is what you putting your energy into because that's the thing that's growing for you. So whatever it is your life looks like today, that's your fact. And, I, and I'm not being ugly with you, but I encourage you to change the cause. To change the way you're thinking. This is a law that we're governed under. And you might not believe in this, this law. You might think, oh, she's just trying to get me oh, um, away from, from God. And, and oh, she, she's working for the devil, you know. Baby, I've sat on pulpit all my life <laughs> with my mom. I sat on the first row in church all my life. If anybody know anything about God about religion, about energy, about spirituality is me. And I wouldn't steer you wrong. You are God in physical form. Isn't it written that ye are God? And thought by thought, word by word, everything that you are saying, everything that you are thinking, everything that you're believing, you're creating those things through thought. So it, it, it's, it, it's, it's really important for you to have a moment in your life where you sit down and boy, I tell you, you know how they say the idle mind is the devil's workshop? Well, the, if that's going to be the case, well, yeah, well, that idle mind could also be a workshop for you to create some good. <laughs> It can be a heavenly place. It can be a peaceful place that I don't mind. That's because you have a choice on what you give your thoughts to every day. And so as I've been alone with myself in my thoughts and sifting through my thoughts, I always now on purpose, because I'm mastering my mind and I encourage you to master yours, I, on purpose, I always choose that thought that feels good. And so if I get a thought that doesn't feel so good, because this is truly the devil that we, we really were thinking was a man or a energy and with a pitchfork. What really and truly is the devil is when you're not in alignment with yourself and you're feeling these low frequencies, shitty ass thoughts. That's really the, the so-called devil, them shitty ass emotions. You know, that fear, that anger, that hate, that jealousy. If you call anything the devil, call that thing there the devil. And what truly, truly is sin, what, what, what real sin is, is when you are not in alignment with yourself, when you're not experiencing joy and love and bliss and peace. And that includes peace of mind. That's when you're really sinning because you're sinning against you and you're getting an emotion, which is your indicator that you don't feel good and that you're not in alignment with your higher self. With you, that you're not in alignment with God, with source energy. And so there's always going to be a cause and there's always going to be effect. And your effect is going to always be because you caused it, baby. You caused it. And so this is why, you know, some people after, you know, getting out of religion and into spirituality, they don't want, they don't want to send praises to something outside of them. They realize that I'm God. I'm thankful for my growth and my journey because the biblical text was at the end of the day about each and every one of us becoming, starting off as an atom, particle, part of energy and rising to the Christ conscious state of being. Tap into infinite intelligence. I and my father being one and there being no middle man. No middle man. <laughs> you are that man. You are that man. You are that dry bones that needs breath, breathe into you to, so you could live. You are that Lazarus that needs to come forth. You're all, you're all that exists. Because it's, it's your subconscious mind which is creating and everything in your reality. And when you understand that, you see why you have those effects around you. That is so important in the journey. Let me look at these comments because I want to talk to y'all real quick. Let's see. Brown sugar. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it is. We have to train our mind to what we want. Yeah, thought by thought. Thought by thought. 
and, it, and it's like, okay, if I have a thought, okay, I was about to cook. If I have a thought about my food not coming out tasting good, we could let that thought flow through me. And then you counteract that thought and say, Shh, everything I touch is good. I know how to season food. I know how to see, if I know how to season food, I know about flavor, then my food gonna be delicious. I never cooked a, a shitty ass meal before. <laughs> Almost always made it, made it turn out to be something. So you counter think that thought <laughs> and it loses its power is what I'm saying. That's, that's how you deal with them thoughts, thought by thought by thought. And you keep on going and you keep on making more comments. This is a habitual thing that you do in your inner dialogue that you're doing. And you keep on making thoughts that are a contradiction to that cheated thought and you move on. And so now your positive thoughts, my positive thoughts for my cooking, for my meal is going to outweigh my negative thought. And so what happens is the most the thought that has the most energy or power to it is always going to win. So huh, the food going to be good. And so shall it be. That's what's happening. Everything you think of is happening that way. The most dominant thought is winning. So your most dominant thought is your effect. That's your dominant thought. And so, so, so if I didn't have any money in the physical reality, that would mean my dominant thought of, oh, I wonder if I'm not going to make it. That's the thought that's winning. So in order to fix that thought, I am abundance. Well, my lights never came, went off before. Well, well, I have money from, you know, this here stream of income and, and well, you know, everything is always working out for me and, and I'll be fine. You know, I trust, I trust source energy so much that I don't even care. I just surrender because everything is just perfect, you know? And then that thought is losing its power because now you're giving the positive thoughts more energy, more attention in order to grow and work for you. So now that's the most dominant thought. Now up the doorbell rung and that's, some, that's the mailman with a check, an unexpected check, because now my, my effect have to change because my cause or my way of thinking just changed. Huh. That's how this, this thing called life in the matrix work, that it starts with you. You are the cause. You are the cause. And then that might be much, I know, I know it might be much when your life is shitty, when you're sad. But you're the cause. If I was attracting men that maybe, you know how they have some women, they get abusers, like that beat them up. You know, they got, they, they done got like three or four of them in one lifetime. And here I am. And here maybe some of you maybe never had one. You know how they have some, some, um. Some women, or men, let's say the men, the men have some men that think, oh, women are bees, right? And they get all of the bees and all, oh, every woman that they meet is a bee. Everyone. When I'm like, dang, I know a whole lot of beautiful women. I consult with a lot of beautiful women. <sighs> They're far from bees. I myself, I'm far from a bee. I'm far from a person that, you know, is just in it to take or or, you know, rob or, you know, run game or whatever, so to speak, on a guy, right? But these women, these men attract that, but but that's the effect, though. They don't want to realize that it's their effect because that's how they think it's supposed to be. They're the common denominator. And that might be hard for that man, hard for that woman to say, wait a minute, you mean to tell me I'm the reason why so-and-so comes, all these men come up to me to beat me? For that man, you mean to tell me no, uh-uh, no, no, that's because they got a lot of bees out here. But in order for them to have a lot of abusive men in the physical reality, they have to be some that are gentlemen, because that would defy the law of polarity. In order for there to be the so-called bees that take from men, they have to be some, 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 some ladies per se, some goddesses per se that exist in the physical reality, because if not, that would defy the law of polarity. The law of polarity states that there must be both sides. Two sides to everything. So, but because of their cause, which is their thinking, their thinking is bringing them to the people that are on that particular side. They're never in their physical reality is going to experience the other side of that two-sided coin because their thinking, their cause is like a magnet. Their thinking is going to bring them over here 
when over here is what they really want, but they're thinking, gotta bring them over here to experience what they are thinking. That's how that go. That's how it go. It took me a long time in my journey to figure that out. And I'm hopeful that you are learning from me because life happens through me. And I want to leave this with you for your life so your life could get better. I love hearing from my reflections when they tell me that they doing, that they listen to the affirmations and that their effect has changed. Their life has changed because that's what it's all about in the journey. It, 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 it makes no sense to come forth in physical reality and stay on vibrating on the same frequency forever because you are energy, frequency, and vibration. You're supposed to be moving. You're supposed to be shifting. You're supposed to be expanding and evolving because that's what you really came for to do for the thrills of expansion and evolving and remembering who you are. Not to get stuck on one frequency when you're God and you're all that exists. You want to experience everything. It's okay to experience shitty moments. It's okay. Because God is all. God is even the shitty moment. But I believe that shitty moment. I believe that fear, fearful moment. That, that so-called low frequency moment is really designed to tell you, look, ain't nowhere else to go but up. <laughs> so it's time for you to dare to do something different if you're there right now. It's time, since you're the cause, to change the way you're thinking so that there could be some more effects here. Because guess what? There's so many other frequency, God, that you haven't experienced just yet. And you came forward to experience all of them because this ties into the law of rhythm. For everything, there is a season. You remember that in the book of Ecclesiastes. There's a time to be born and there's a time to die. Basically, that is tied to the law of rhythm because all things have a season. So if you are in the season where your effect looks shitty, God, what that law is saying to you that you said you're the cause God change the way you're thinking God vibrate on another frequency God so the things that you look at won't be shitty so they can become like heaven on earth because that's the ultimate bliss that's the ultimate love state of being that we are all on a journey to experience so we're supposed to be able to look back at our journey remember when we was at that low frequency place and realize that yeah I was slow but now I'm at a higher state of being yeah one day I was lost but yeah now I have found my inner being myself my spark my light yeah I remember that we were all supposed to be like the prodigal son, just go away from the bosom of God, of, of bliss, of joy, of love, and, and to, get, to be thrown here and fro and to and fro all across the nation, so to speak, right? But we all were supposed to remember to come back home, to remember to turn our lights back on to shine. And the way that we do that is by turning this light on. <laughs> this here light. And when we turn this here light back on, the superconscious is ready to embrace us. It's like we've come home. This is, this is equivalent to us going to heaven or having heaven here on earth. This is equivalent to us rising from the dead. Because when you're in that dead state of being, you sleep. You don't realize you sleep and you're just going through the motions in life. You're just walking around in that robotic state of being. Just going to and fro, just bobbing. Okay, okay, but when you wake up and realize it's you, all of this is you running the show, then you understand, oh, I have a choice. Every day I have a choice. I could think this, I could do this. And, and God ain't never left me. God was always inside of me. And oh, okay, this here part of my life, this is the part of my life that mm, I want to tweak it a little bit. So I'm going to give my attention to it, but I'm going to give my attention to it in a positive way so it could be tweaked. And so the next 90 days of my life could be a different effect. <laughs> it's that easy. Let's see, it's true. Exactly. We have to train the mind. Let's see. Thanks. You said a mouthful. Change the cause. Yeah. 
We are our own devils. No one and nothing can create for us. That is so true. That is so true, Faith. I say, change your mind. Yeah, beautiful. Hi, Temp, Temp Thoughts. Oh, okay, I like that name. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep preaching, you're blessing me immensely. Hey there, hey there. What is that, Steven? I say, like your hair. Thank you, Finesse. Finesse Journey. It was at fitness. These words are so bright over here. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, I just wanted to look at these comments right quick. I saw your video about the empty house and how perfect it is. Oh yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. And not and that's a great example because going back to what I was talking about about my thoughts being on laying on this blow up uh, mattress in my little bitty uh, refrigerator that I was talking about in that particular video, but no, but this is perfect. I don't even have a chopping board. I got this one little plate here that I'm chopping <laughs> my stuff up. But guess what? It's perfect, though. It ain't that I don't have no money to buy myself nothing, y'all. It ain't. I come from a house. This is not my first house. This is my second house. And I added on to my first house. And I had this big old walk-through closet and this big old pool and this big master bedroom. Everything was just so big. Just big, 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 big. <laughs> but I, I've learned in my journey, really, the simplicity is it's really so heavenly. It just feels so good to just be simple. And so in the, the simplicity of me just having a little blow up mattress and a little mini refrigerator, I make myself simple little meals and stuff. And I'm thinking simple thoughts. And I tell you one thing, my mind, my thinking has changed. My thinking has changed so much because like when I meet people and I'm talking to people and they say, well, what you doing? It's like, I don't know. I'm just so eager to explore this day. Just like I was telling you about the hummingbird thing that I want to do today. And then they ask me, you know, what do you need for your house? I'm like, you know, the next cool thing would be a dresser. And I, I guess I'll get a dresser next because I just want to get my underwear and my socks off the floor in the closet because I have them folded up on the floor in the closet. But besides that, it's okay because I'm perfect. I'm perfect. I feel perfect. My life is perfect. <laughs> my mind is perfect. Everything is perfect. And I promise you, I've been doing this here thing, speaking to people. I traveled to universities, I've spoken in churches, I've, I've spoken on jobs at corporate American events, I'm here on YouTube, I'm here on TikTok, I used to be on Facebook, and I've, <sighs> Woo! I feel so happy for my growth in my mind. I'm say, I said all that to say, in the beginning of my journey, this was something that I longed for that I long for. And so I spoke of it in the beginning of my journey, but I wasn't there yet. <laughs> but I arrived in the process of my journey to tweaking my mind the way that I wanted to. So while I was, while I was being an inspiration to others, I was inspiring my own self. I still was in the becoming stage for my own self. This is growth for me. This is, this is me arriving to that place where it's like, no, no, no. You're perfect. <laughs> it brings joy to my soul, my inner being, to know that I am connected to that state of being where I look at people through the eyes of God. I look at myself through the eyes of God. I see no flaws. This is what Jesus in the biblical text was doing. No, 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 your faith has made you whole. No, 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 blind man, you can see. Because he, or that allegory text was teaching us how to see things through the eyes of God as being perfect. Even though you have a choice to look at that thing and, and see that that thing is shitty right there, but no, no, let me look at the good side of that. Even though I have a choice to say, well, I don't know if this is going to come out right. No, I'm not going to make the choice to think shitty about this meal. No, 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 no. this meal could be perfect. <laughs> Baby, when you get there in that part of the journey, things move for you. Life happens through you. And then everything that you begin to think about, 
once you sift through them thoughts you, and you go outside, all of your reflections gonna be your answer. You know, so so when I go outside, like I was sharing with you all, I want to do retreats in Sedona. I went outside and I thought I was just going outside because I had a notion to go to the grocery store and to find some agave for my drink. So I'm on the aisle looking for the agave at the grocery store. And a guy, a man asked me, he said, so, so what are you doing for the weekend? And this was for the weekend of the 4th of July. He's like, what are you doing for the 4th? I was like, oh, I, I didn't even think that for, because I don't celebrate no holidays and stuff anyway, so I didn't even think about the fourth was coming. And so because I had already been thinking positive about Sedona and my retreats, <laughs> we talked and he found out, you know, I told him, you know, I, I, I like to go, he asked me what I like to do for fun. And I, I was like, I like to go to Sedona. He was like, well, I got a friend. I got a friend who owns land out there. Oh yeah, he owns a lot of land. So I'm hooking up with my friend. <laughs> I'm going to hook you up with my friend that home, owns land so when you get ready to do your retreats you got the land you see what I'm saying all of this here that was the effect of my cause baby if you get it in here it's going to come out here in your physical reality as within so without you can do this you take practice but you can do this and your effect gonna be everything that you want it to be because you're gonna be the daughter it all up. It's so beautiful, it's so exciting to me that all the while as a little girl in church trying to figure out religion and looking at those elders as if like, man, what, what, what part of it they missing, man? Because y'all older than me, you know, when I was 12 years old and started to think on my own. Man, y'all older than me. Y'all don't seem like y'all got this religion thing fi figured out. You know, I've been in this church, seemed like I was conceived in this darn church and, and nobody in this church seemed to be to figure this out. But one thing was common with those people, they, they love God so much. And so as a little girl, I said, you know, when I grow up, I'm not gonna be like these people here. I'm not gonna be like them, no. I'm gonna find out what it is. <laughs> I'm gonna find out what it is. These people not doing so well. You know, they come constantly in this healing and deliverance line, looking for God to heal them from sickness and disease. They're constantly in this healing line, talking about, you know, they don't have a man or whatever. They're constantly in this healing line because they don't have no money to pay their bills. But I don't wanna be like that when I grow up. So, so my life, knowing what I didn't want, made me begin to think about the things that I did want. I wanted to be able to be healed, you know? I wanted to live in abundance, you know? I wanted to figure this thing out spiritually, you know? The most important to me, thing to me in my physical reality is my soul, my journey, my peace, my, my heart, my mind. That's the most important thing for me. And so with that, it always has been the most important thing for me. And everybody in my journey, in my journey they would say, you know, you, you're old soul. You know, you ain't nothing but a little old soul. You think about things nobody else think about. And, and in my physical reality, all my friends, all my girlfriends, they were always about 10 plus years older than me. You know, because I always liked wisdom. <laughs> I always was drawn to that. Because I knew that one thing about it, you know, that, that'll be the thing that'll keep me. That'll be the thing that'll sustain me. Yeah. Matter of fact, I got a job years ago and, and, and the people told me after I got the job, the reason why they, they picked me with the other candidate was because of my answer to a question that said, if you were stranded on an island, and this was when I was in religion, you were stranded on an island and you were able to take one thing before you left, what would be the thing that you did? <laughs> and I told them, I said, well, I'd want to take the Bible. <laughs> and they said, so why? So what was the thing you want to take and why? And I said, I was in religion. I said, I would want to take the Bible. And I said, because the reason why is because my mental is everything. My mental is everything. And if I could encourage myself mentally, then I'll be rescued. <laughs> That was my answer. And so I got the job with the other person because the other people were saying, nah, I'll take a knife, you know, I'll take a bottle of water, I'll take a seed to, to, you know, to grow a plant or whatever. But I took something from my mind 
That was my answer. And that's always been my answer to all things because I know that my mind is powerful enough to create worlds. I know that your mind, this is why I come out here talking to you about your mind all the time, is because it's so important that you can change your world and your reality. It's all mine. This scheme is all a mental game. This, this here so called matrix is a subconscious mind. God's source energy is nothing but a super conscious set of energy where we all stem from. It's all energy, frequency, and vibration. You get your mind right and you've mastered everything. And so sometimes the mind is hard to get right when we're in corporate America because we have a lot of noise. But that's why it's so important to meditate. That's why it's so important. Even when I was a mother for young, you know, my boys, I'm still a mother, but when my boys were younger and I was in college and my husband, you know, you know, he worked longer hours than I did, but I still worked. And I was in college still, and I was a mother, mother. And that was like the most chaotic, so to speak, my mind or my life was. Even at that moment in my life, I knew that to be true because I would go to the park. I would go to the park in my, and I would sit in my car just to give me some quiet. And sometimes I would be on my way from the store, you know, making groceries for the family. And, and, and before I went into Walmart, I made sure I sat in the car for about 30 minutes before I went in or 30 minutes after I got out. Because even though I didn't really grasp it back then, I knew there was something about bringing stillness to my mind and paying attention to my thoughts and making sure that I was okay. Even in the midst of having papers to do and making food for dinner every day and taking care of things in corporate America and being a, a, a wife, my mind, my quietness. But I was in religion still. And so in religion, it was teaching, you know, you, you don't want to go in. You don't want to do the meditation thing because that's when the demons going to come out. But yeah, yeah, you're right. That's when them shitty ass emotions and that fear that religion teaches that so-called devil with the picket fork, fork that we always wanted to run away from. And that so-called hell that is not a place, but it is simply a mindset. Yeah, all of that's going to come out when you quiet that mind. But you want that stuff to come out. You want it to come out because if it's inside of you, that means <laughs> your effect outside of you going to be just like hell. If you have fear, if you have hate inside of you, you want it to come out. So I would go and I would sit there and I just breathe. I just take deep breaths, you know. I would just breathe. I, I was in religion, so I was at this point, I was scared to go in. I was scared to meditate because I didn't want the devil to come and get me because that's what Pastor them had said. And, you know, my mother is in the in ministry, right? So my mother, my auntie, my brothers, my uncles, everybody now. I, I didn't have anywhere to go to, to, to talk to. Hey, I need to, to clear my mind here. All they said in, in religion was just go to church, just just talk to Jesus. And so I got to a point in my journey where, you know what, I, I respectfully, Ma, don't tell me nothing about no talking to no Jesus. Because I've been talking to Jesus since I learned how to talk here. Yeah? There's something more, there's something greater. And so that's when I begin to learn to meditate and go in my mind and sit. And sure enough, when I went into my mind, guess who came out? You know, it got, it got scary, of course, because it was already in there. It got scary. And I was so scared of meditating because I, I was doing good. And then at one point, I began to meditate in these little black birds that was, well, they were white little doves in, in the beginning when I went in. And I was just like acting like I was just flying in the air. You know, I was, I was grounded and I was connected to the universe, but I was flying in the air and, <laughs> and my doves, I knew them by name and I said hi to them and I said hi to the puffy, the puffy clouds and the beautiful skies and, and the sun and I was just so at peace. I was bringing peace to myself. This is the only way that I knew how to bring peace to myself. And all of a sudden those white doves, because I had fear inside of it of sight of me that I cause fear to show up in my mind, those white doves turn into little black hawks and they begin to like peck at me. And after that, I was afraid to go into meditation for a long time because you see that's the that 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 be the thing. When you're coming out of religion that scare tactic, that fear, that hell, that'll scare you enough to stay in religion, to stay in your place of or your state of being, right? But I had to realize 
that I caused that too. And the effect of that was that I now was being afraid to meditate, to quiet my mind. And so I had to face my own fear, just like I'm teaching you all. You got to face your own shitty thinking and be accountable for your own shitty thinking. So one day I decided I'm going to just go back in. And I would try to go back in and then my thoughts, my thoughts, my habitual thoughts was coming at me saying, yeah, go back in and watch it. It's going to get worse. So now I was speaking life into the fear and the fear got greater and greater and so great till it got to the point that I was starting to become scared to go home. Because my house started to feel like uh, a freezer. Like that it had in energies inside of my home that I just moved from. <laughs> and, and, I, and I would make sure that somebody was home before me because I didn't want to go in and face myself. Now all of this is stemming from my mind. This is my effect. I caused. Right? And so that I had to go in my mind. I had to change that thought. And so one day I just got tired. I was like, man, look, I'm, I'm grown. I got children, you know, I got, I got a husband. I got a family here and, and my ass is scared to go home. <laughs> Sitting in the car, scared to go home. I caused this. So I gotta, I gotta get myself up out of here. And so I went home, I called everybody that day and I made sure that nobody was home before I got home. So I was gonna be the bold chick, right? I'm about to change this effect because I'm the cause of it and I went up in there and I said whatever you are I opened up that front door whatever you are wherever you come from get your ass out of my house right now and then I was walking toward the back door because he was like a, a straight shot and I opened up the back door and I had the front door open I opened up the windows and I wasn't into the sage and all of this just yet. I ain't know nothing about no sage. I was just doing this thing energetically. And so energetically, that state of peace came upon me from my mind, from my thoughts. Because my thoughts created this thing. And just like when I do consultations with people who are telling me they're having nightmares and this and that and the third. You have your own universe within you. So it's all stemming from within you. And they don't, sometimes in the beginning, they don't be wanting to embrace that just yet. But then as we get along, you know, doing the process of the consultations, oh wait, yeah, it is my thoughts. It's always yours. And I, and I can say that to them because I battled my own thoughts first. And then I found, I came to the conclusion that it was me. I fought my own fears, my own demons already. I sat with myself already, so I know that any of my reflections, that whatever they're going through, whatever state of being that they are, it's them. I don't judge my reflections. I look at my reflections and I do the eyes of God and I'll be like, oh, I, I can't wait till that kingdom comes. Oh, I can't wait till Lazarus come forth. Oh, I can't wait until he rises from the dead. This is a beautiful thing, the beautiful power that we have. We all have it. Nobody's exempt from it. Nobody greater than even when people sit there and say, hey, 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 chosen ones. God damn it, we all chosen. <laughs> the murderer is chosen. Yeah, everybody's chosen. Everybody's vibrating at a different frequency. But all of those frequencies represent the totality of God. They're all purposeful and we're all chosen. Hey, light workers, everybody is carrying a light. If they were not carrying a light force inside of them, you in the physical reality would not be able to see them. It doesn't matter how mean or hateful they, that you project them to be. Remember, you're projecting them to be that. It doesn't matter if you want to put a label on them and call them a so-called narc. Remember, they can only be what you think them up to be. So there go your narc. You ask for your narc and there go your narc. Why won't you get to the place of being in your physical reality or in your mental per se where you turn your narc into God? Well, your superpower is at to do that. Thought by thought, you can do that. But you're choosing, see, it goes back to your choice. You're choosing to have your narc to be the narc that he or she is. You're choosing 
to have the asshole in your life to be the asshole he or she is because you could always choose to give the asshole another toy. Because life is happening through you, God. You're the God. So everybody in your kingdom represents your thoughts, your way of thinking. Just like the 12 disciples were around the, 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 the Christ conscious one. He thought the one that was the Judas. He thought that up. He thought it up. He said, I, there's one that I know will betray me. Through thought. He, he told you what his thoughts were. <laughs> yeah, that's how this thing goes. Let me see. Thank you, thank you, very true. I learned so much from you. Yeah, oh, literally changed my life for the better. Thank you. That feels good to hear. That feels really good to hear. Let's see. This is an awesome word. Thank you. Thank you, babe. Peace, love, and light. <laughs> I see you, babe. I see you. Uh oh, them comments jumped. Yeah. Wow, this is so true for me. Yeah. Where you from? I'm from New Orleans. You look good. Thank you. I watched the magic happen right in front of in front of me. I can't do nothing but smile. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy. What's for dinner? Oh, hey, Dion. Of all people, of all people, Dion said, what's for dinner? <laughs> An awesome word. Actually, I, um, I bought a piece of salmon from this place called Fry's out here. I don't... That's the only um, grocery store I have right here. So I got me a piece of salmon. And I'm about to make a salad with a little piece of that. And I got my herbs sitting right here to chop up. I got me some cilantro, of course, because cilantro get rid of heavy metals and stuff. You know, I'm really into health and wellness too, not just the mental aspect of things. But, um, yeah, I saw this here and I, I grabbed it. I didn't know what to cook and I can't get too much to cook because I got a little bit of refrigerator, like I said. But um, the water, the reason why I got all of these herbs, but I always eat herbs too, but these selected herbs that I chose today was because the water out here is really, really hard. It's really, really hard. Like, I don't know if y'all been noticing, but like my skin, my skin, it's like it's beating me up. I got to get a water filter too. <laughs> So the people that I hear, they don't drink this water. They, they caution you about not having a filter actually out here. I don't know. So um, the reason why I told cilantro is because it get rid of um, heavy metals. And if you facing this here, your physical reality, it gets rid of heavy metals and that fluoride that's in waters and the, uh, calcium deposits and all of that. So I'm going to have me a piece of this here salmon and drench it with some cilantro and some purple onion and green onion, white onion, the oregano onion powder, red pepper and all of that and make a big salad with it. That's it. And I'm gonna put some of my um, herbs inside of it on top and my chopped up seasoning. It's gonna be herbified pretty much. <laughs> more herbs, more peppers than anything and some juice, a little bit of um, avocado oil and a little bit of spring bottle water that I'm gonna put up here because you can't use a little faucet water. Well, I can until, well, I'm not rather, I can, but I'm not until I get my filter. So that's what I'm making up in here. He would ask me, cause he be, he be munching over there on his little lives. And it's amazing feeling I'm staying right here on cloud nine. Yeah, stay there, babe, stay there. He still was for dinner. So yeah, I watched the magic happen. Yeah. Okay, I, I read that already. Okay, yeah. Where are you located now? Look at you, stop by to listen. Oh, hey, big dog freedom. Big dog freedom, ain't that a name? <laughs> Where are you located now? Now I'm in Arizona. I'm in Arizona, I'm from New Orleans. I lived in New Orleans all of my life. And I just wanted change. I just wanted something different. I felt tired of hurricanes there and the energy there. It's really cool and soulful and fun when you're at that state of being. But you know, you after a while, you know, you just get tired of you know same old. And you want something different. So I wanted the total opposite of New Orleans. You know, they had humidity there, and I wanted dry heat. 
it was a party place kind of like and i wanted peace you know in high elevation and all it was um it was a fun journey i still have some family down there but but i'm no longer there and and i'm happy with this change because of my growth and where i am i felt like i was drawn to stay in new orleans for many many years because of you know, family, fear of the unknown and not getting out. You know, I didn't really start moving around or traveling until Hurricane Katrina happened. And But the thing that really struck a chord with me was when I realized that I had been running from hurricanes since I was a little girl. And I didn't even think about that. You know, it became the norm that, you know, you just run and you go back home and rebuild. But it, when I came from Sedona for my meditation retreat and I realized that, wait, I've been doing this here since I was a little girl. And I teach you know, about being insane, about doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Why am I constantly rebuilding the same home over and over again? Why? And then I know of other places that are beautiful and, and that are peaceful and, and feel like heaven on earth. And so I decided, you know what? I'm going to manifest that thing. I'm going to get in these thoughts. I'm going to change the way that I think. And I'm going to play make-believe. I love, always did love playing make-believe. I do make-believe all the time with the things that I want. Before I even stumbled upon the law of assumption, I was up in the house making believe things to get things to happen for me financially, of course, because those were the things that was most important to me at the time. But I decided to make believe that I was living in Arizona already. I decided to fix my house and keep my mind focused and be a deliberate creator as if I was walking in my house. Every time I cook like I'm cooking now, I would pretend that I was cooking in my new kitchen, this kitchen here. And that's how I knew how it would feel before I got here in the physical reality. I knew how it was going to smell. I knew how, you know, how the fruit that was going to be on my counter was going to taste because I bit into a fruit already in, when I was in New Orleans. I knew everything about it. I knew I was going to have carpet in my bedroom because I wanted, to, it went, um, in my imagination, I wanted something to sink my feet into when I first got out of bed. Matter of fact, in my human imagination, when I was in New Orleans, that's what I would do. After I woke up and I thought about it, I had this big shaggy rug underneath the, you know, my king size bed out there, but I had porcelain floor, you know, throughout that room. But the shaggy rug was the first thing I uh, stepped on, so still living through the law of assumption, I assumed that I was stepping into my carpet that was going to be throughout my room in this here house right now. And so I pretty much thought that up. And, and I've, I've thought up a lot of things, not just this here. This just happened to be the, you know, the most recent thing. I've thought up every vehicle that I've ever had, every job, every position that I ever had. I thought it up. It was just me. It was always me. And but I begin to get more aware, become more aware that I was creating through my mind, that I was a deliberate creator. And then when I begin to become aware of that, I begin to want to share with other people. Now, mind you, I've been saying this and doing this for a long time. <laughs> but like I said, it's a journey for us all. It's a journey for us all. So we all are on this journey. And then you have stragglers or that, that look at you and really doubt you because they can't see what you're constantly thinking of. And they think maybe that you're lying when you said that you thought it up. And that, but that's, that's those people. That's those people. You just, you just, you just let your reflections be their reflections and see them through the eyes of God. And you keep on with your thoughts, you know, because nobody can tell you what you thought up. And so people, some people on the outside are probably still be thinking, oh, it's just a coincidence. Oh, yeah. She she went through the process. Anybody that goes through the process of trying to purchase a house going to get it. No, not, not necessarily. Because they have some people that are struggling to have a house right now. And they are struggling because their cause. Their cause of the way that they're thinking and they're looking at the economy and they're looking at their finances. Their cause. Not everybody is doing that. Some people struggle with it, and that's why I come here to teach those that are struggling with it to change your mind, change the way that you look at things, and then everything outside of you will change. <laughs> Lion, horse, and humans, huh? Yep, it's a mindset. Powerful. You're aware of your powers. Yeah, definitely. You're aware, too. I can feel it. 
I don't even know you. This is my first time even seeing your name, but I could feel it through um, energetically. Why not Texas? Why not Texas? Everybody in New Orleans in Texas. They either in Texas or they in um, Atlanta. No, I wasn't trying to follow the people in New Orleans. I was trying to move to the rhythm of my own beat. <laughs> I got, believe it or not, to be honest with you, I have one sister who's in Texas and I have another sister who's in Atlanta. That's just where the New Orleans people go. No, I was going where my soul resonated at. You know, I had been out here maybe about a good five times in my soul, the Lord, the part of me was like, yeah, this is happening. And if I was to explain it in layman's term to you, the feeling that I have of being here when I, when I come, came each time, even before I manifested living out here, it was like heaven on earth. I would say, because I come up in religion, I would say this place in the physical reality is, would be, would be, even though I know that, you know, the biblical text was an allegory text, I would say that this would be the place that Jesus himself, you know how they talk about Jesus fasting in 40 days and 40 nights, and he always being up on the mount to pray, and the disciples going to sleep down there, I would say this would be the energetic place for me, for me, that that happened. That's how much energy that's how much feel good that's how much of a portal i feel like i'm inside of right now that's how much bliss and joy and freedom that i have and that's really why i want to do the retreats because i want to be like man come on come on get this energy man even if it's just gonna be a weekend retreat or you know three to five day retreat come on stop what you're doing change your environment get out of that conscious state of being jump jump into this subconscious so you could connect with the super conscious and we could do it all in a place where the environment is conducive of a high frequency so you can go down the rapid hole and see the goodness of god or the kingdom of god that already lies in you and so that's that's why I'm so passionate about you know being here, the retreats, and and coming on here to talk to you about it every day. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Let's see. I just want to say thanks again for your message, for the confirmation to what I have been feeling. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for thinking me up, cause that's all that happened. You're the cause, and I'm your effect right here, right here on TikTok. I'm your event yeah that's beautiful so so if my soul felt at home in hung hungi punta cana dr that's when oh i don't know how to pronounce that particular place but you know what never ignore that that intuition that intuitive that that that, that gut feeling inside of you aqua aqua flame yeah never ignore that because what what i look at that as being is that being your internal gps which is connected to your higher self right which is connected to infinite intelligence all knowing right and so wherever feels good and it puts you at a place of love and ah, peace and joy euphoria feeling whatever that is that's where you're supposed to be for me this is where that is right now but even with that in mind i don't look at this place as being all for me because in my mind how i'm going to create my little effect is that the universe is now my home i'm not gonna be hooked up to no attachments and say this is it for me forever no i'm not gonna program my mind like that the universe is my home. So in maybe a year or so, if you all see me in another country <laughs> talking to you again, I told you I didn't limit myself. But for this right now, very moment, what I am going to do is what feels good to me. And right now, this feels like home. Right now, this feels like peace. It feels like heaven on earth. So guess what? I'm going to do that. So if that place feels good to you, if you're thinking about it, even the fact that you mentioned that on this particular live, Let's me know that you got some energy pulsating over there. So do what feels good to you. <laughs> Is that easy? Is that easy? Hey, Leroy. How you doing, babe? Yeah. I would love for you to break down the Lord's Prayer as it relates to spirituality. I actually did that in one of my older videos. I actually did that. So, I, honestly, I don't even pray anymore. 
Like, you know, you did it in religion, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. But I'll say the simple version of that is that the Our Father prayer is really tied to the seven chakra pools of energy inside of your body. Our kingdom, our Father who art in heaven, uh, give us this day our kingdom come and, and on earth as it is in heaven. Every line on that particular prayer, it correlates with the chakra pool of energy. And so basically, even in the book of Revelation, they talk about this, the seven seals and you know the letters to the churches and all. Really, it's all about you. It's all about you knowing that you are hooked to infinite intelligence. You knowing that life is happening through you. You making sure that all chakra pools of energy inside of you are in perfect alignment. Because that, that's really the beginning of the journey. Making sure that you're open to knowledge in your kingdom. Making sure that your third eye is open. You see what I'm saying? Making sure you're speaking your truth. Because the truth is going to be the thing that's going to set you free. Through your self-expression. through It's all tied to you, you, the glands in your body. You know, Making sure your heart is open. Making sure that power and will is in balance. Making sure your sacral chakra energy, your creative sense of being is in balance. And making sure your root you're, root, you're deeply rooted, you're grounded. You don't have any survival issues from, from trauma, you know? And so, <laughs> and so that's my idea of prayer. So now for me, prayer is like me thinking positive. Prayer is, is me just using my human imagination. Prayer is me being grateful, you know? Because I don't, I don't get down on my knees and bow and do that prayer you know, off the top of my head no more. That's what it means for me, you know? And so I feel as though I'm already complete and whole in that area where I don't have to do that anymore. And not, I'm not saying that it was wrong. I'm saying that it was part of the journey. And I appreciate religion for that part of the journey that it taught me, you see? I appreciate, you know, understanding that when praises go up, blessings come down. Because guess what? In my spiritual journey now, I understand, oh yeah, when I'm grateful, when I think about the things that are just and pure and of good report, and if I find virtue in, in them and continue to think on them, yeah, that's me like giving praises. And, and nothing but blessings, nothing but more of that will come down for me. So I don't really pray like, you know, church people would pray no more. I don't because I, I found out the, the, the rhyme to that. But I'll, I'll repost that um, that I'll pour the prayer, how I broke it down spiritually. I, I even broke it down spiritually in my book from my website, He Who Has an Ear, Let Him Hear. Because um, it's made all of the difference. That foundation of religion has made all of the difference in my life. So I don't shy away from religious people. I just try to share my unlimited spiritual mindset because religion can limit us in certain aspects hi miss exotic oh thank you oh i like that thank, thank you that was so beautiful oh brown sugar sent me that thank you i appreciate that but yeah that's why i am in my journey of spirituality you know and and religious actually got me here you know my mom my uncles beating our butts to go get ready for go, to go to church. You know, all of that. I needed all of that. I'm not going to say nothing bad about it. I needed all of that. And I'm thankful for all of that. It taught me a lot about myself. You know, it taught me a lot about God. And I, I, just, I just always was in a place in my closet as a little girl where I just cried to God. And I was like, you know... God, in my innocence, I would be like, God and devil, y'all need to wake, make up because people in the church, they hurt and these people don't know what they're doing. And y'all got to wake up. Y'all got to make up and devil, you need to tell God that you're sorry because I'm about to be an adult. This is how I was trying to fix the world, y'all. <laughs> I'm about to be an adult and I don't want to be an adult like these adults because these adults don't know what they're doing. <laughs> you know, because I was watching my mom go through different relationships. I was watching the people in, in church, you know, go through different situations, you know, because I was the usher, the little girl usher. So I heard everything. And so it, it's been beautiful. It's me evolving from that little girl that saw the stumble and now me being an adult teaching others about, hey, 
This is what I've learned along the way, sharing my life and how it's unfolding. So I, I, don't, I don't see a problem with religion, and it don't even have nothing to do with the white Jesus, black Jesus, or whatever. It don't matter what color it is. I will tell them, you are the Christ conscious one. The Old Testament was the old way of thinking. The New Testament is your new way of thinking after the Christ conscious one rises, after you wake yourself up. Just like in the Old Testament, how they talk about, because like I'm in the physical reality, people would say, aren't you a vegan? You're eating meat today. Yeah, well, <laughs> all is God. You know, because there's levels to even that. You know, in the Old Testament, they'll talk about all of the stuff that you can't eat. But when you renew your mind, when you tap into infinite intelligence, you know, <laughs> when you realize that all is mental, even it's a level even past becoming a vegan. You're like, but bless your food. That's what Jesus said in the New Testament, but just bless your food, you know? That, that's, that's really the reprogrammed mind that Jesus was trying to give to the masses, you know? And so... Everything's energy, frequency, vibration. So the only way that this is food, this is salmon, it's going to hurt me today is if I thought it up. <laughs> it's if I thought it up because cause life is happening. Oh, it's this phone. Oh, I'm tripping. About all of the bad things that's going to happen, well, so shall it be. But if I eat it and I think about all of the cilantro that I have up in here, and like I was sharing with you, all of the things that it'll, you know, get rid of and those so-called water that's supposedly having all kind of calcium inside of it. And okay, so I'm getting rid of that. And then I have my onions and then I got my, my purple um, onion too. And it correlates with my crown chakra. So it's going to make sure that my pineal gland is not getting calcified. And then I have my green, I have my green lettuce here. And it's going to take care of my heart. And oh, and I have all of my colors of my chakra in, in my peppers. And it's going to take care of all of my other chakra pools of energy. When I'm thinking that thing, when I'm eating this, regardless if I had a piece of pork chop, which I don't, I don't need to never touch pork chop. <laughs> but if I had that and I'm still thinking, this way, nothing shall by any means harm me. Why? Because of my cause. And my effect is that I'm going to have good health. My effect is that it ain't going to affect me. All of this thing is mental. It goes to medicine. It goes with medicine. It goes with food. It goes with that man. It goes with that, that uh, job. Whatever aspect of life you're talking about, it's all mental. It's all mental. You're going to keep on getting would you keep on thinking and that's just it that's just it and i appreciate you for that because so many people need to hear this yeah yeah they really do we really do but we really are though i think everything is perfect if we push out if we step back from it all like you know if we think about even the idea of so many people need to hear this but if we step back out all the way the totality of the universe is governed underneath or by the superconscious. So when we look at people, even with the subconscious minds of everybody, of the collective, everything is going to be in balance, regardless of how, because see, we in it. But regardless how we only may see the people that need it, there is still balance, because there's going to be this set amount of people which is going to balance the tool of this other set amount of people that need it and that have it because that it cannot be out of balance it can't <laughs> it can't so yeah i agree i understand what you're saying though but they are just like on the news they're not going to show us all the people that are conscious they're not going to show us all the people that have maybe gardens and that's, you know, that's maybe quitting corporate America jobs and that's doing businesses all on their own. That's maybe, you know, following their passions. They're not going to tell us that. They're going to only tell us, you know, the stuff that's scripted for them to say. So they're not grasping the totality. They're not doing, they're not sharing us the 50-50. They want only us to see that portion. But trust and believe outside of just television and the news. That source energy has this thing in balance. They got so many fearful people over here, and it equals the amount of people that's on the love frequency. They have people that are having shitty experiences over here, and they got people who are not having shitty experiences over here. It's all balance, all of it. It's governed underneath the law of polarity. Everything's perfect. That's why you could say everything perfect.
we just gravitate into whatever we're thinking. But everything collectively is perfect. It's a time to be born, a time to die. So this amount of people dying, but guess what? Look at all these people that came forth in physical form today. It's perfect. And once you understand that, you you know that life could just flow with you and through you and you just understand, you know, you're going to get both sides. But everything perfect. <laughs> all right, y'all. I'm about to start chopping up my onions and I think I might cry on here and I don't want y'all thinking I'm boohooing. <laughs> So I'm about to cut this short. Y'all got any more questions up in here? I'm from New Orleans. New Orleans, Louisiana. If I start crying, I'm, hang I'm hanging up because uh, these onions be strong. But yeah, so that's about it. I just really want to uh, share that with y'all about cause and effect. You govern underneath these laws. These laws have power over us so what are you going to do about it what are you going to change are you going to be the change be the change babe be the change come back on later okay okay yeah i was just there essence oh for essence really that's cool i haven't been to essence for years years so i was over essence the mardi gras and all of that yeah i'll come on later babe i, I heard y'all don't want to Seem like I ignored it, but yeah, I'll come on later because I got time. I got time. But yeah, I don't do the essence and the Mardi Gras thing no more. You know, you once you once you into that life all your life, you be wanting something different. It's so much of partying you could do. You know, so much of Mardi Gras, so much of hanging out, barbecuing, and stuff that you could do. And maybe some people just want to do it forever, but that wasn't a thing that I wanted to do with my life because I was more on a spiritual journey. But I learned a lot. I'll tell you one thing before I go. I learned a lot from like the healers down there because you know, it was a moment when, uh oh, here go this purple onion. There was a moment when, um, when I was into, you know, um, energy work. When I was doing energy work, so I learned a lot from downtown Bourbon Street, the little, um, the little room shops and stuff, the things with incense and herbs and, and roots and all of that, because that's just energy too, because God wants to experience all, and I honestly want to understand what that was all about too, energetically. So I learned a lot there with religion, with energy, with the so-called voodoo that the religious people will call it, and I grew from it, and here I am. Here I am, and I can look back over my journey and say, no, I learned that. I did that. I experienced that because that's another thing about church people being limited in their thinking. You know, they'll say, that's the devil. That's, this is the devil. But in order to really understand the devil, per se, you know, when the devil in it, when we relate it to religion, in order to understand it, none of them had explored it. So how is this the devil? How do you know it's the devil? Why are you using that term, this is the devil? You know, so I wanted to explore it. So when they said, you know, oh, voodoo is wrong, I did everything, to be honest with you, that the church people said don't do. You know, because they wasn't doing the church thing right, look like to me as a little girl. So I went and explored all of those things. And so when they say, um, you know, oh, you don't want to meditate, I went in and I faced my fears with that and I overcame it. And then they talk about the voodoo, whatever, the roots. You know, I never did anything negative to anybody or whatever, but I wanted to understand what the conjuring up spirits and stuff, entities and stuff was all about. So I did it. I said to myself, I'll take one for the team if this ain't working for me. And if I get caught up in this thing, because my mom, she's a minister in the church, right? And she was really, really scared for me. And she was like, oh my gosh. I'm so scared, you know, I'm going to pray for you. And she would come over with her holy water to pray for me and all of this and that and the other. But I was saying to myself, I'll take one for the team because evidently nobody in church taking one for the team to really figure out this thing. And they always talked about this and that and the third being the devil. Well, let me go explore it and see. Because like even with people that do, you know, boxing or play for the NFL or something, they explore the other team that they're about to play. So they could see what the weakness, whatever it is. So that's what I was doing. I called it me exploring what the heck going on with the devil, right? And so I never did anything energetically to hurt anybody. Love was always my intent because I had that foundation of spirituality or religion inside of me, deeply rooted inside of me because I had been in church. But yeah, I burned some candles. I sure did because I needed to understand that. I did a little voodoo per se or energy work per se. Yeah, I sure did. 
And I'm proud of every aspect of my journey because it taught me teens. It taught me my power. It taught me how I can use my power. And along my way, you know, they had the light workers and then they had the dark work, magic workers, right? Along my journey, I met some amazing, beautiful people. I really did. I really did. I wanted to meet the lowest of the lows and the highest of the highs. And I met them. I met a lot of them in New Orleans. I did. And there's nothing scary. And see, when we put this fear behind it, we, we, we stunt our own growth. See, see, knowing is, is you being experienced that thing and you done put that thing into work for your life. You find the, the good pieces of that thing and you use that for your growth in your journey. Just like those Hebrew Israelites, I explored them too. And well, you know what? And they didn't sit with my soul. They didn't sit with the larger part of me, my spirit. When they would tell people that they was going to, you know, the women, that they was going to get raped just like the black women had got raped. You know, the little ones that be on the corner just hollering and talking about this white picture of Jesus is, is you know, the Antichrist or whatever they do. That didn't sit well with me, but I explored it. I sat there and I listened to their teachers. I, I sat there and I just took the nuggets that I needed for my growth and I kept on going. Because one thing that I remember in religion is that they would always talk about their spiritual buoyancy where you fall down and you bounce back up. So I would go in and I'll make sure that I didn't fall down. I would get everything that I needed to get and bounce back up and keep on moving with my journey. And collectively, all of those things, some of those things from when I was um, conjuring up energies, some of those things from the Hebrew Israelite, some of those things from religion, some of those things from, from health and wellness, some of those things from mindful practices, all of those things collectively made me make my choice and, and reset my laws to how I want to live my life. And that's all I'm saying to you all. Make the choice. Make the choice because at the end of the day, you're going to be the cause and your life is going to be the effect. Your life is going to be the effect. <laughs> So explore. You cannot ever get this thing called life wrong because you're God. You have choices. You live on and on and on for eons and eons and eons. That's what you're here for. Rewriting your so-called wrong or making a so-called new choice. That's all you're doing. But have fun along the journey making it. That's my advice to everybody. Be the change. I like that. I'll be the change. Okay, so anyway, I'm about to cry because these onions got me teary-eyed. I'm about to end this video. This video was from my heart to yours, baby. Be blessed.